What's going on, guys? Wanted to take a moment and kind of show my collection and, you know, kind of acclimate anyone who's joining the channel, maybe subscribed, uh, kind of what I've got. Um, I did do a count. I haven't counted in the longest time how many games I've actually got for the N64. And I'm coming in at... 166 titles out of 296 so yeah so without further ado this is in no particular order although I am going to kind of go from worst to better titles so uh, yeah without further ado it uh, <laughs> we'll start it out with this gem got uh, Mega Man 64 and I should say that um, I did opt for the universal game cases and uh, had these all printed. Uh, they did come out pretty good. Uh, I will make a, a separate video on how I accomplished that. Uh, not too bad. It was uh, definitely an investment. But anyhow, uh, and <clears throat> before anyone says, uh, I do, uh, and that's a horrible first uh, loose cartridge to be showing off. Rough. Anyhow, do have all of them in here. Uh, anyway, Mega Man 64. Got Blues Brothers 2000. Superman. Oof. This beaut. Elmo's number journey. Tigger's honey hunt. Bass Hunter 64. I did rent this as a kid, and uh, I hate it. I, I still hate fishing in real life, but it's all right. In video games, at least. This game I did play a lot. Ken Griffey Jr. Slugfest. Let's see when this was released. 1999. Yeah, I, I grabbed this when I was younger during the... Uh, Sammy Sosa, Mark McGuire, home run shootout. And, uh, yeah, I got kind of sucked into baseball video games. Virtual Pool, definitely a chill game. I do enjoy playing that. Player Snow Cross. I've played this a little bit. I do remember it being kind of difficult, but... Definitely a good standby. 1080. 1080 snowboarding. Definitely a must have for uh, the N64. And Wheel of Fortune. Pokemon Stadium 2. NHL Breakaway 99. Nagano Winter Olympics 98. Can't remember if there's hockey on this. I would be surprised. Oh, maybe not. Ah, we'll see. I have not played this. And there are quite a few games that I haven't played. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I just, you know, you gravitate toward the games that are the best. And uh, just enjoyable to play. Uh, Wildlife Country Club. True Golf Classics. Yeah, definitely one of the cheapest titles for the system, if you dig on golf. I hear it's not too shabby. Keeping with the golf theme, got Cyber Tiger from Electronic Arts. Good old Monopoly. And uh, the Thimble, now discontinued. I can't remember what they replaced it with, but... Yeah, definitely a shame to see the thimble go. <laughs> there we are. Pokemon Stadium. And I do not have the uh, transfer pack yet. I do have a copy of Pokemon Blue. So uh, I'll have to jump on that and, and try and get some of my... Because I do have my original save file from when I was a kid. Disney's Tarzan. And uh, this is actually a pretty fun game. It's... Uh, yeah, it's definitely enjoyable. Yeah, this is... So, 
<clears throat> it's worth mentioning, and I'll, I'll kind of go through some of the difficulties that I had with making the Universal Game Case uh, cover art and all that, and this is one of the problems. Shipping, sometimes you get some, some bum uh, cases, and they get damaged in shipment, so it's a shame, but it's on Tarzan. Maybe I'll switch that out for Superman 64, because I don't imagine I'm going to take that off the shelf a whole load. Scooby-Doo, classic creep capers, and I have this in black and white to uh, signify the gray cartridge. Uh, so I am going to try and collect some of the variants. And uh, I just figured the best way to do that is to do the gray cartridge with a black and white box art, you know, and that, that'd be the best way. have a little subsection on my shelf of that. Rugrats Scavenger Hunt, NFL Quarterback Club 99, have not played that, never been a big football guy, <clears throat> NFL Quarterback Club 98, FIFA Soccer 64, and buying, my first attempt at buying this game, thank goodness I was trying to buy this game and not another one. I accidentally bought the PAL version of this game. Uh, I was excited. I was just on a soccer kick at the time. I'm not a terribly big soccer fan, but I uh, I could only imagine if I tried buying a game that was a little bit more pricey and I uh, got screwed with a PAL version, but uh, that was early on in my collecting career, so to speak. Uh, next up, got In The Zone 98. World Cup 98. Got some NBA Jam 2000. Not a whole load of basketball games that I've played, but I do hear the Jam series is pretty good. Got NBA Jam 99. Kobe Bryant and NBA Courtside. NBA Live 2000. You'll have to forgive me, I'm yanking these off my shelf, like, on the fly. NBA Live 99. And if I had to pick a, my favorite basketball game for the N64, definitely a great arcade uh, take on basketball. That's NBA Hang Time. You're seeing a theme here. I'm trying to hit all of the uh, sports titles. It's kind of a catch-all on the, the bottom tier of, uh, I guess, any systems collection. Wayne Gretzky's 3D Hockey 98, the great one. Definitely a, a more arcade-style approach to, to hockey. NHL Blades of Steel 99. Got Yager up there, rocking that mullet. Definitely a great game. I have played this a fair amount. Along with uh, this title, put more time into this game, my early childhood, than I would care to admit. But that is NHL 99. This is the only NHL game made by EA Sports that was released for the N64. So I was lucky enough to get that as a kid. I definitely loved playing this. I still have all of the sound bites by Bill Clement memorized. So, without further ado, I've got a couple games that I recently picked up <clears throat> that I don't have any of the box art for. I just haven't had the time to cut them. I do have a, the complete library already printed. I just have to cut them up. And, uh, yeah, get them slipped in there. So, got Tetrisphere. Hadn't played that until I picked it up. Uh, it, I love Tetris. You know, it's a video game classic. And uh, it's an interesting spin on it. I, I really enjoy it. It was hard to figure out without reading the manual, but uh, it's a good one. Got Quest 64. 
Arrow Fighter's Assault. Have Castlevania. And then uh, Castlevania Legacy of Darkness. And uh, the first Blockbuster exclusive game on this uh, collection video, Track and Field 2000. And uh, you'll notice that I, I have the uh, property of Blockbuster sticker on the front. Can't remember if this wraps around. Yeah, so this one does, although the, the top of this has uh, come apart. So I have the property of Blockbuster sticker on here. I do like that because it, you know, while this game isn't particularly expensive or rare, et cetera, et cetera, that cover, that, that plastic sticker really helps protect the label. And it's also a really nice seal of authenticity to, to see that on there. I definitely like seeing that. You got to be weary though, if you see this removed, you can see a lot of the residue. So I'm not you know, worried. I wasn't worried when I was looking at uh, photos of this because I did buy this on eBay because uh, I was specifically looking for this sticker. But you should be weary if you don't see any sticker residue or the property of Blockbuster sticker on the back because uh, it's very easy to acquire the front part of the shell and uh, yeah, put a repro board on the inside and then just slap any old uh, back part of the shell on the back and try and pass it as legit. So definitely something to keep in mind. So moving on, I have great game. I put a lot of time in with uh, a lot of the kids in the neighborhood. Everybody really got into skateboarding as a result of this game. But Tony Hawk Pro Skater, awesome, awesome title. I do like this and the second one on the N64. I know that some people are going to definitely gravitate toward the PlayStation version, which I get. Um, this was just what I had for myself when I was a kid. And Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2. My, I, It has, at the very least, my favorite soundtrack of any of them. Although... It's, I, I really do like If You Must. Uh, that's a great feature, uh, featured track on, on this game. I love Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3. I, I played 3 on the GameCube more than anything. There was a kid that lived down the street from me that had it, and I loved it on the GameCube. Definitely a great title. Uh, but speaking of music, this one has some of the most insane <laughs> electronic music. It is uh, Buck Bumble. Uh, if you wanted anything to uh, play in the background to get you up off your seat, it would definitely be the soundtrack to this. It is a quirky game. I have not put a lot of time into this. It is incredibly difficult for the limited amount of time that I put into it. So I do like the box art of this. It's uh, it is pretty cool. A little misleading, but um, because this guy isn't flying, and I think you majority of the time I put into it, you you're flying around. I mean, you're a you're a bee for God's sake. So, but yeah, definitely an interesting one. Going forward here, this is another game I had as a kid. Uh, NASCAR 99. I always aimed to do the complete real life uh, lap totals for each track and failed miserably on the realistic settings for this. But uh, it's a good one. I, it's, I'm nostalgic for it. You know, and that, uh, that definitely clouds reviews. Uh, you know, that's. Uh, those objective reviews are difficult when you really just love a game because you had it as a kid. But Wipeout 64, I have played this. It's uh it is a nice it's a nice title. It complements F Zero pretty good. You know, F Zero X is definitely my favorite, but have uh, Cruising USA, and this is the only cruising game I have. There's uh, Cruisin' World and Cruisin' Exotica I do not have. 
been looking for them. It'd be nice to have a little subset there. Got a little, another broken corner. Definitely a solid racer here. Beetle Adventure Racing, definitely a misleading title. This came out right around when they redesigned the Volkswagen Beetle. And yeah, they, they really did a solid job. Uh, yeah, Electronics Art, Electronic Arts, pumping out a really good racing title here. Definitely enjoy this. Speaking of great racing games, have Diddy Kong Racing. It's an awesome game. I really enjoy this. This is a great multiplayer title. Now, getting into some pretty good games. Got a good one here that I really loved playing as a kid. Still do. Not this, but uh, Excite Bike 64. Definitely a great great title. Supercross 2000. This is what I'm talking about. This is great. I love playing this with the neighborhood kids. Road Rash 64. I think this was the first installment in the franchise that had, this was in 3D. And uh, yeah, I, oh man, I just love playing this. Definitely fun when you get further in. You can kind of see there's a, an island here. And some of the early races are very short, but as you progress into the game, the the levels or the uh, races get really long. And uh, that definitely makes it a lot more challenging and fun as a result. Next up, Scars. I've put in a bit of time. I haven't really done it uh done it any justice yet but from what i did play it is it is definitely an interesting game i enjoyed it for the short while i played it micro machine 64 turbo i did not get a free vehicle inside although if you can get this complete in box with the car i think that does command a pretty uh, decent price now uh fun looking game i have seen some gameplay footage haven't played it but it does seem really interesting and it's something that the N64 is definitely good for. A lot of racing titles. Lego Racers, definitely interesting mechanic here. You can build your own cars and, uh, yeah, kind of progress through the tracks and customize your, your ride yeah, by building it. So, pretty cool. I do like this. I played this uh, years ago. I couldn't even tell you how far I got on it. But definitely a cool one. This one I did rent as a kid. I had an infatuation with monster trucks, and that is uh, Monster Truck Madness 64. Huge fan of Grave Digger. I did have a couple models of uh, Grave Digger. I really never got out to a monster truck event, but I hear it's loud as hell. So I, I'd enjoy going to one. Definitely interesting that Rockstar developed this game do not have, I think, I can't remember if I have Body Harvest. I can't, well, we'll find out shortly. And that's, I've gotten to the point with uh, this library, this collection, I mean, for the N64, that I'm having a hard time remembering what games I have and what I don't. I keep a master list with me. So, definitely a great standby here, Wave Race 64. Awesome game, beautiful water, you know, graphics here. I've played this a fair amount. It is an awesome title. Uh, and if you can find out how, there is a cheat code that instead of driving a jet ski, you can actually ride dolphins from what I hear. Haven't done it for myself, but definitely a cool little hidden feature there. A couple more racing games. Uh, Rush 2 Extreme Racing USA. Automobili Lamborghini. I have not played this, I think, for obvious reasons. It's, it's just better race titles for the system, but we'll get around to it. Indy Racing 2000. I did get out last year to my first Indianapolis 500. That was an awesome experience. I watched uh, kart racing when I was a little kid, when I was playing the N64. Uh, 
and uh, I love it. The race racing culture is really cool. Um, so now we got F1 Grand Prix, World Grand Prix. Uh, F1 is definitely its own beast in the racing world. Let's see here. Top Gear Rally. Got another game I rented as a kid, Off-Road Challenge. Definitely a fun title. I really enjoyed this. It, something about the visuals in this just really stuck with me, so I was really excited to finally get a copy of this uh, as I got older. Fun game. Definitely fun. Got Extreme G, XG2. Uh, I suppose it's Extreme G2? I, hmm, Extreme G2. I don't... This seems a little redundant to me, but... Uh, Interesting sort of uh, sci-fi type racer. I have played this. It, uh, uh, I don't know. Killer Instinct Gold. Definitely a great fighter. It is uh, definitely a genre of game that the N64 lacks, but definitely a good title for the system. And this gem, put in a lot of time with this. I am... I don't want to say I'm a slouch, but I'm not the best. It is F-Zero X. One of the few... Oh, I couldn't even tell you if you quizzed me, but how many games actually have 60 frames a second? This is one of them, though. Um, the developers opted to have uh, lower uh, graphical capabilities in favor of having the higher frame rate, and it definitely paid off. And those some of those levels in the later in the game definitely get challenging. Uh, this is a game I did not own as a kid, but another friend of mine did have. We played the hell out of this game. I was lucky to have a Demolition Derby track not too far from me. Uh, talking about Destruction Derby 64. Definitely a fun game. Definitely worth a pickup if you have the chance to get it for cheap. Dark Rift. One of my favorite uh, box art, you know, this is just, yeah, it just looks so badass. Uh, this guy looks hardcore, man. I really like it, and I love this uh, font. Definitely cool. Have yeah, Fighter Destiny 2. This, this, this always, speaking of box art, always stuck out as me as being a little awkward. I don't know, this, it didn't feel like it fit the N64 very well. But, um, interesting fighter. Next up is Mace of the Dark Ages. Wield the power of the mace. Definitely an interesting one. Um, when I went to go buy this, I hadn't done much research on it. Um, I was kind of buying it for uh, this guy, man. It just looks gnarly. So, definitely looks like... Uh, protagonist of a Viking metal music video, I think. I'm not sure. Uh, but I was surprised to see that this is a fighting game. Played a little bit of it. Interesting. I'm definitely saving it. But one of the uh, classic fighters for the system and all video game history, I would say, is uh, Mortal Kombat Trilogy. This is a great title. Glad that they ended up porting this to the... And 64. No blood, though, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, oh, no. Realistic blood and gore. I stand corrected. Oh, you know what? I think this was when Nintendo caved and they decided it was okay. So one of, the, one of those few games that has that M rating for the N64. Next up, we have none other than Mortal Kombat 4. And starting uh, this little section of the shelf here, wrestling titles. Got WCW, NWO Revenge. Definitely uh, a throwback. I, I grew up in the Attitude Era of wrestling, and this hits home for me. I really enjoyed this game. I did play this a fair amount. Have WCW versus NWO World Tour. I I loved I loved wrestling so much that I I don't know if other kids across the United States did this, but 
we did a project called Flat Stanley, and we got to send this 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 guy, Flat Stanley, to whoever we wanted. And I chose to send my Flat Stanley to Hulk Hogan, and it ended up all drawn over. I wish I still had it. Um, I don't, but I do still have the nice glossy print. I should have brought it over here, signed by Hulk Hogan. Um, I, I found out as I grew older that uh, usually it's just kind of secretaries that uh, are really good at forging their autographs, uh, celebrities' autographs, that more than likely did it. But, you know, it's still a cool thing and it's a fun story. WWF No Mercy. This is before the, that horrible change to WWE. I really wish, as a kid, I never understood that, man. I really wish I would have kept the WWF. Definitely uh, love that logo. So I got the the rock up here, man. Next up for the wrestling titles, I got Hardcore ECW Revolution, or is it uh, ECW Hardcore Revolution? I'm gonna go with ECW Hardcore Revolution. That doesn't make sense to. Anyway, this is uh, from what I've read. I I didn't watch much of ECW as a kid. I did see it a couple times, but I I think it, it was. A lot more violent uh, performances done by these guys. A lot more aggressive. A lot more blood. And that's probably why I didn't get to see it a whole lot as a kid. Mom hated that shit. And uh, not not so much even for the violence. Surprisingly, it was it was because of the women. They started really bringing women in on uh, in the ring and around the ring, and uh, they just dressed real scantily. Uh, it, it was. Uh, yeah, not good for an adolescent boy to be uh, seeing. Not even an adolescent boy. Uh, I was like, you know, nine years old watching this stuff. Anyhow, got WrestleMania 2000. And, yeah, World Championship Wrestling. Mayhem. Got Goldberg up here. And one of my favorite wrestlers, Sting. Awesome game. Awesome game. Last up for the wrestling titles, got WWF Warzone. Got Stone Cold up here. And WWF Attitude. Moving on. I got Gex64, Enter the Gecko. Have not played this, but I've heard some good things. I have a couple friends that do have this, and they swear... Buy it as a, as a good title. Star Shot Space Circus Fever. It's a mouthful. Say that five times fast. Charlie Blast Territory. We got next an awesome game Blast Core. Definitely a quirky, interesting title nonetheless rare definitely a uh, a good indicator of a, a solid game nice standby space invaders classic arcade title robotron 64 played this a lot it is definitely a fun game to play especially you got a couple people around it's uh, really entertaining 200 levels challenging definitely challenging Magical Tetris Challenge. Got a, a slew of Disney characters. Yeah, sold by Capcom. Very cool game. Very cool game. Next up, got Load Runner 3D. Fun puzzle game. I really enjoy this. I am kind of a sucker for puzzle titles. Um, mostly reserved for the Game Boy, but this is a fun one. I really enjoy Load Runner 3D. Next up uh, in the puzzle department, got Wet Tricks. Definitely a fun game. You got to manage uh, water that comes from above, and you have to find ways to create these pools and uh, trap as much water as you can without losing it. Definitely a fun game. I enjoy it. It's definitely a nice casual game. So, on the polar opposite of the casual and extreme spectrum, got Doom 64. Not to be confused with uh, original Doom 1 and 2, 
this is its own sort of beast, different levels, uh, different sprites, enemies, they all sort of look a little different, um, but still a Doom game nonetheless. It uh, embodies the essence of the Doom franchise, the original Doom and Doom 2 franchise games. Uh, those, those are awesome games in their own right, and this is a great addition to, to those series of games. Got Quake and Quake 2. I've put in a fair amount of time in, into Quake. Uh, I have not dug into Quake 2 yet, but I've heard they're very similar, and uh, I'm happy to hear that too because I really enjoy Quake a lot. Haven't beaten Quake yet. I sort of opted to uh, centralize my, my focus on Doom. Let's see here. Back to the other end of the spectrum, I've got Miss Pac-Man, Maze Madness. Bust a Move 2, Arcade Edition. This is definitely a, a nice, relaxing game to play. I do, do enjoy this one. Midway's Greatest Arcade Hits Volume 1. Got some Robotron 2084 here. Yeah, I never played Root Beer Tapper. But I uh, played Spy Hunter and Joust and Defender, Robotron. <clears throat> Next up with the uh, collection releases, got the Namco Museum 64. Played a lot of this. I really wanted to get this for these two games right down here. I'm not a big fan of the Pac-Man games, honestly, but I love Galaga play that a lot. I play that competitively with a lot of my friends. It's a fun game to play. And Dig Dug, uh, when I was a kid, I actually played Dig Dug on an arcade cabinet. It was an original Dig Dug arcade cabinet. Um, I played that when I had to go to my sister's horse riding lessons, and I got stuck there for an hour, and my mom would give me quarters and play this game. Such a fun game. Next up, Bomberman Hero. This is, I think, the only Bomberman game I have for the N64, but it's a good one. The uh, second attack has eluded me. Definitely a pricey game, but I'm keeping my eye out for a good deal. Next up, got Knife Edge Nose Gunner. Definitely a diff difficult game. I've, I've tried playing this. It is a tough title to acclimate to, or tough game to acclimate to, I should say. It's definitely fun. I, I gotta put more time into it, kinda hone my skills. Up next, I got Shadowgate 64, Trials of the Four Towers. This guy's eyeball, man, is freaking me out. I, uh, little Lord of the Rings imagery going on here. And let's see, when was this released? Yeah, another 1999, so. Yeah, definitely interesting. I, I played it, honestly, just to uh, make sure the cartridge worked. So I'm really interested in that title, though. Looks pretty cool. Up next, got War Gods. True 3D Fighting Environment. Yeah, I, uh, I've read a couple of reviews on it. Not the best... But, make up for it here, Hybrid Heaven, really cool game, interesting uh, in its own right. I really enjoy the time that I've put into it, haven't beaten it yet, looking forward to that. Batman Beyond, Return of the Joker, and I think this was, yeah, they were still airing Batman animated series when this was released, and I absolutely love that series so good so but next the only rayman game for the n64 rayman 2 the great escape up next got armorines project swarm and one of my favorite series of games i've got turok dinosaur hunter Amazing title. One of my favorite first-person shooters. Turok 2, Seeds of Evil. Turok 3, Shadow of Oblivion. 
Got Turok Rage Wars. And yes, if you were wondering, I did manage to grab Turok Rage Wars with the uh, gray cartridge. Not the best label. Um, I kept my eyes on it for a while uh, because of the label damage. I think uh, it was some water damage. I did test it and uh, I asked the seller because I did grab this on eBay. Tried to get it in the wild, definitely difficult to find, but got a little bit of discount for uh, the label damage. So glad to have that in the collection. Up next in the first person shooter department, awesome game to have, GoldenEye 007. If you have not played it, you're a horrible human being. Go buy it right now. 007, The World Is Not Enough. And this game, I, I grabbed this really hoping it was going to be an awesome Doom clone, and the controls are a big letdown. But the setting and imagery is really cool. I, I'm still going to play it, obviously, and I'm going to hopefully beat this uh, soon. I want to get at this. It's a Hexen. Definitely interesting. I was real bummed that it doesn't have the same customization of controls as uh, Doom. That's just, man, I wish they would have done that. So Definitely a unique game coming up here. Uh, Winback Covert Operations. This is an awesome game. A unique game for the time, too. Um, the developers were really inspired by the Metal Gear series. And uh, you can tell when you look at gameplay footage of this or play it yourself. Um, the, the taking cover and peeking around corners and firing on your enemies was a really unique mechanic for the time. Um, and I think there were a lot of things. I think the laser sight in this game was something Metal Gear didn't have. Oh yeah, here you go. The closest thing to Metal Gear Solid for your N64. Um, the developers for Metal Gear Solid, Sons of Liberty, implemented some of the features from Winback Covert Operations, and uh, they gave credit to the developers of Winback um, for influencing them. So it was uh, definitely cool for, I think, both development teams there. Up next, got Perfect Dark. Gotta have that expansion pack, though, for uh, your maximum gameplay. Awesome title. One of my favorite games, Duke Nukem 64. I do not have Zero Hour, if you were wondering, but that can be changed. It's not an expensive game, so thank God. Awesome game. Do love it. A game that... Oh, man, yeah... I uh, I have not played this in a long time. I rented this a lot as a kid. Got Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six. And then I also have the gray cartridge. The uh, This one is in black. Fun game, fun game. Great as a co-op. So moving on up to uh, some top tier games. Gonna have to forgive me here. Get all the way up there to grab these. Got uh, Rampage World Tour. Anyone who says uh, it's not that good of a game, it's super repetitive and redundant, you know, that's not what. <clears throat> I don't know. I mean, it's it, they are kind of got Rampage too. <coughs> Excuse me. They are repetitive, but I mean. They're casual arcade games. They're they're meant to be pretty chill. Not a big storyline. And I think... I think in Rampage... No, not World... Uh, yeah, I think it is World Tour. Uh, the first level is in Peoria, Illinois. Which is not that far from me. <clears throat> Up next, I got uh, Chameleon Twist. Definitely a quirky, weird title. Uh, some of the mechanics utilize the tongue of the chameleon to get around. Very interesting game. Some cool puzzle elements there. 
Got Chameleon Twist 2. Up next, got uh, some great Star Wars titles. <coughs> got Rogue Squadron. Definitely an awesome game. Ooh, excuse me. <clears throat> this game I did have as a kid. I loved this game. And, uh... Yeah, I, I didn't realize I had a sticker. Lukey Games is still in business, too. They, they don't have good prices, so don't don't even bother looking at them up. But uh, I do like to keep the sticker on there. It's definitely cool. I can't tell what's underneath that on the yellow, but put a lot of ga uh, gameplay uh, into this and never beat it. Never beat it. So hopefully I can change that awesome fast-paced racer. Episode 1 Racer, awesome game. Definitely rivals uh, F-Zero X for sure. Got Shadows of the Empire. Have not played it. I'm saving myself for this. It's, uh, I think it had mixed reviews. Depends who you are, I think, and when you sort of played it. But it looks really interesting to me. I'm a huge fan of the Star Wars franchise. Love the movies. Um, you know... Everyone rips on episode one, but it, it wasn't like that bad. Um, speaking of episode one, got uh, episode one, Battle for Naboo. Up next, got Mario Party 1. Awesome party game. Definitely a must-have, although some people will prefer Mario Party 2. I do not have Mario Party 3. I've been itching to get my hands on that. Up next, debatably one of the best games for uh, the system. And some would say the best Zelda in the franchise? Uh, I, I would tend to disagree with that, but I only have the gray cartridge. I would like to get the uh, gold cartridge. That would be great to grab. But I can hold off. Because uh, I've at least got a, one copy of the game to play. Awesome. I honestly only played until I got to the Water Temple. The Elusive Water Temple. And uh, I started playing that in depth in college. And uh, yeah, I just kind of had to put it on the back burner. Because I, I couldn't put as much time as I wanted into it. But the uh, follow-up to that, Majora's Mask. Up next, I got a couple of games here that I had as a kid. I do love this game. Vigilante 8. Awesome. Awesome game. I really enjoyed playing this. You know, the four-player mode is, is just a blast to play if you got the right people. And I did not have this as a kid, but Vigilante 8 Second Offense. Awesome title. It's... Uh, you know, if, if you really like the first one, you're really going to enjoy this. Up next, I did have this as a kid, and I did beat it. Battle Tanks. Really interesting. Um, I, uh, I read in the manual that you can customize the controls a little bit. <clears throat> Not terribly uh, as in-depth as I would want, but... I played it on the simplest controls, and I cannot believe looking back at it now that I actually beat this game with those control settings. And uh, the sequel to that, Battle Tanks Global Assault, have not played this. I wanted to be sure I beat the first game and then move on to this. Moving on. Got uh, Nightmare Creatures, one of the gnarliest looking covers I've ever seen for a game. I love this thing, man. It is just dark and awesome. Haven't played it a whole load. Uh, I've watched more gameplay footage of it than actually played it, but I think I'm going to save that for uh, sometime around October. Up next, got Command & Conquer. I think the first Command & Conquer game I ever played was the Tiberium Wars. Um, played that on PC at a friend's house. His older brother played it, and uh, man, it blew me away. So when I found out that there was a Command & Conquer game for the N64, I ate that shit up. I rented this quite a bit when I was a kid, 
awesome game. A little difficult to maneuver um, <clears throat> with the controls, but, you know, it is what it is. CN64, for God's sake. Up next, got Body Harvest. This was uh, published by uh, DMA, soon to become Rockstar, the makers of the Grand Theft Auto series. And there is an homage to this game. There is a quest, or a quest, a mission, I think, in GTA 3. And it's called uh, none other than Body Harvest. Up next, got Spider-Man. This was an awesome revolutionary game. I think this was released for the PlayStation, and that's where I played it first. And I loved it then. You know, definitely a cool game. <clears throat> Getting down to the wire here. Up next, I got a game that I had <clears throat> as a kid. Army Men Sarge's Heroes. Awesome game. Did beat it. Happy to get that under my belt. The not-so-good Army Men installment was uh, Air Combat. Definitely, a, in, you know, it's the next logical step, but eh, not the best. But thank God there are some decent flying games. We've got Pilot Wing 64 here. Definitely an awesome game. I, I've played a fair amount of it. I haven't challenged my shelf, my shelf, myself, and done the more difficult challenges and gotten the uh, more difficult licenses. But did what I can with the time I had. Donkey Kong 64, one of the coolest intro songs ever. Mischief Makers, one of the weirdest games for the system, but. It's, uh, for as weird as it is, it is good. So, with the, the weird comes good, there's a lot of weird. Awesome game, for sure. Up next, we got Star Fox 64. Must have for this system. Um, I watched, I, I didn't play any of this game until I got older, but I watched a friend of mine beat that, and I could not believe it. It was just the coolest game for the time. Just revolutionary game. I loved it. Up next, got Glover. Gauntlet Legends. Put in a fair amount of time with some, some good friends of mine. Put, uh, oh man, hours and hours of fun. Never beat it, though, with four players. Got Kirby 64, The Crystal Shards. The chillest of chill games to play. Not difficult at all. But got Jet Force Gemini. Getting down to the nitty gritty. I shouldn't say, and that's not meant in a negative way. Got Banjo Kazooie, game I had as a kid. Never beat it. Me and my sisters tried our asses off to beat this game, and there, were, there was something in this game that we couldn't beat. I have the original save file on this game. I'm really curious to go back and see where we got hung up. Up next, we got Yoshi's Story. One of my favorite sports games ever, Mario Tennis. Amazing. Uh, I heard that there is a new title that's going to be released. Mario Tennis Aces, I think, is what it's called. Curious how that's going to pan out. But awesome game. One of the best racing games. Created an entire subgenre of racing. Mario Kart 64. And up next, got Super Smash Brothers. Paper Mario, and Super Mario 64. So I'm going to kind of delve into some weirder titles and some of the more pricey ones. And while this one isn't incredibly expensive, the last one in the series for the N64 definitely is. But I got Blitz, NFL Blitz, awesome arcade football game. I I'm not a big fan of football, but that game definitely sucked me in. Got NFL Blitz 2000. NFL Blitz 2001. 
And then the Blockbuster exclusive Blitz Special Edition. It's happy to get that. And uh, see a theme here. I'm trying to go for all of the Blockbuster exclusive games with that specific uh, sticker on it. See, and you can see that this does not have that cover, but there is residue on here. You can see I've cracked this open. This is an authentic game. Awesome game, though. Kind of getting into some rarer games that's a little bit more expensive. Got uh, Harvest Moon 64, awesome game. Have uh, Transformers Beast Wars Transmetals, not the best game, but nonetheless a blockbuster exclusive. Got uh, Stunt Racer 64. Definitely a quirky, weird game. I really enjoyed this. When I picked this up, actually, I had a hard time getting that playing, and I started panicking, thinking that something was wrong with the game after I spent as much as I did on it, because I did pay a pretty penny, uh, even though it was uh, a loose game. But still, awesome game nonetheless. Up next, we got uh, Conker's Bad Fur Day. Yeah, advisory. This game is not for anyone under the age of 17. I'm sure... Nintendo specifically requested that to be placed on the front of the box like it was a uh, like a health warning on a pack of cigarettes, for God's sake. But awesome game. I have played it a fair amount. It's definitely a quirky, funny game. Up next, one of the not-so-pleasant uh, rare games that was a blockbuster exclusive, Diakatana. Uh, John Romero's gonna kick your ass, I believe, is what was uh, quoted in the the ad campaign for this. They definitely hyped this up a lot, and it was not the best. But you know, what can you do? All right, we got uh, Worms Armageddon. Definitely a fun party game. Must have if you like the Worms series. And you got an N64. Little pricey, but definitely worth it. And finally, the priciest game for the N64, Clay Fighter Sculptor's Cut. This took me years to acquire, and I finally picked it up. Um, can't remember how much I paid for it. It's definitely quite a bit, but as per usual, got the property of Blockbuster sticker, and this one wraps all the way around. So, uh, yeah, I, uh, I definitely like this game. I, it, it's such a weird game. I, ironically enough, did rent this as a kid. And, uh, man, had I known then what I know now, I would have bought all of those copies up when Blockbuster went out of business. So, anyway, if you have followed uh, this video all the way to the end, I really appreciate it. If you have any game that you can recommend... Leave a comment down below with a game that I should definitely have on the docket to pick up next. Um, you know, I'm curious to see what are your guys' favorite games for the N64. Uh, feel free to let me know. I'm really curious. Um, so, without further ado, we will catch you on another video. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.